In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to build the ultimate picnic table. Not only is it weatherproof, but it also has a built-in cooler, cup holders, and condiment trays. Here's the supplies we're going to need to get started on this picnic table. We've got five boards of composite deck material. This is sort of like MDF if it were made out of plastic. It's textured to look like wood, is extremely durable, and is pretty much completely weatherproof. Each of the boards I have is eight feet long and they are the same width as a two by six board after it's been planed down. I've got five two by fours that are eight feet long and I have two one by fours that are eight feet long. We have some regular two and a half inch screws, some one and a half inch screws, and some two and a half inch deck screws, which are specifically designed to work with this composite material. I also have a scrap piece of board that's one quarter of an inch thick, and that will be used for spacing out our other boards. To help with the structural integrity of this build, we've also got some three and a half inch bolts and the washers and nuts that fit onto those. Here's the basic idea. The general design is a straightforward picnic table, but we're making some improvements. The tabletop and benches will be made from weatherproof decking boards. Added supports under the table will hold a plastic tub that acts as a drink cooler and will add closable cup holders and two small removable baskets to hold condiments. Let's start by cutting all of the major pieces that we're going to need for this bench. First up is our composite board and we need nine pieces that are four feet long. These boards are almost exactly eight feet long, but they have enough extra that we'll probably do a little bit of trimming. There are several pieces that we need to cut out of our two by fours. The first is the legs, and for that we need four pieces that are 29 inches long. For the support pieces that run parallel to the ground and hold up the benches, we'll need to cut two pieces that are 51 and a half inches long. We need two pieces that are 28 inches long, and those will hold together the top surface of our table. Finally, we need one piece that will run crosswise and that will act as a lateral support. That needs to be 37 inches long. With all of our pieces cut, we now need to start getting ready to assemble. The first pieces we're going to need are five of the composite boards and our two 28 inch two by fours. These two 28 inch pieces will work as supports for the five slats that are the very top of the table. To avoid cutting and scraping knees while sitting down at the table, we want to modify the two side supports by cutting some 45 degree angles into the ends of them. After adding the cuts, our two supports will end up almost trapezoid shaped, although I'm not going to try and make the cut come all the way to the exact corner. To add a little bit of strength to it, we're gonna have our cut end right about here, leaving maybe a third quarter of an inch, about a centimeter at the bottom. So we'll have a cut, something like that. We're going to be attaching the five composite planks into these two by fours using screws going down from the top. So we now need to line them up just in the right spot on top of these beams and spaced out just the right amount. We want this support to be four inches in from the end of our board. Our scrap of quarter inch board is going to be cut up and we're gonna use that as spacers to make sure that the slats are evenly spread out across our table. We'll start by securing one board on this end and then making sure everything is pressed together, spaced out just right, secure the other board on the other end, and then secure two of them in the middle. For the moment, we'll leave the very center board unsecured. All right. With the four corners attached, we're now gonna to move to the second boards in. For the moment, we're not going to attach our center board because we still need to alter it a little bit as we build the cooler that goes into this table. Although we don't want to screw the center board down yet, we do want to pre-drill the screw holes. The reason we didn't screw down the center board is because we're going to be putting a cooler into this picnic table. We need to cut a slot into this top center board that will allow us to access the cooler down below. What we're using for our cooler is this plastic planter's trough that I got at Home Depot for about eight bucks. This planter box is 25 and three quarters of an inch long and approximately five and three quarters of an inch wide. This size of planter box works very well because its width is almost identical to the space between two of these boards if one is removed. We now want to cut a length of board out of the center of this one that matches the length of our planter. 
Some quick math shows that we should come in 11 and 1 8 of an inch from either side. With our center board cut, we can now replace the spacers and use a couple of screws to hold the end pieces where they belong. These end pieces are pretty sturdy just as they are, but they are going to get a little bit of additional reinforcement from below. We need to add some supports on the bottom that will hold the center top board in place, as well as holding our trough right where we want it for our drinks. We'll set up two pieces of our 1x4 board, one on each end. That's what's going to support our center board when it's covering the cooler. We'll take a piece that's just the right length and make it overlap the gap by about half of an inch. Let's cut two pieces of our 1x4 board that are 12 and 7 eighths of an inch long. We're using that length because we should be able to fit two additional pieces of our board right on the edges and have it all line up with the hole. At this point, we don't want to use our deck screws because if we did, they would just stab out the top of our table. That's a terrible table. Tables shouldn't stab you. These one and a half inch screws should be the perfect length. Our cooler will be able to slide into place. So the two sides will have supports as well as the back. To do that, we need three pieces that are 24 and a quarter inches long and four pieces that are five and a half inches long. While it may not be totally necessary, just to give ourselves some cleaner edges, let's trim off the excess from these 1x4s. We're using 2.5 inch screws, which should be long enough to reach all the way through these three boards and just barely into the composite board below. To be sure this bottom piece is well secured to the surface of our table, we'll use a few of the short screws on here before we attach the other two pieces. Our cooler trough can now easily slide in and out of place and is held on quite stably on three sides. The top of our table is constructed. We have a removable center panel that allows us access down into the cooler, which slides in and out of place for easy draining and washing. So now it's time to turn this table top into a full table. The next step is to add some legs. Four of them, in fact. I find that's a good number for picnic tables. So it's time to grab the four 29 inch pieces of two by four. These four legs will go on at an angle, attached to the cross pieces that run the width of our table. Right now though, they don't sit very flush up against anything, so we want to cut all of the ends at 30 degrees. When we cut these cross pieces, we made them both pointing up in the same direction, giving us a sort of trapezoid shape. With the legs, we'll switch it up and all of the angles will go the same direction, giving us more of a parallelogram. This time we are going to aim for the very corner rather than going up about a centimeter. These legs will be installed so that the outside corner of one angle lines up with the end of the flat portion of the board. To attach each leg, we'll use one screw to start and then two carriage bolts to really hold it in place. The screw is really just so we have an easy way of holding the leg right where we want it as we drill the holes for the bolts. To keep the leg in place as we pre-drill and screw in our screw, it can help to grab one of the pieces that we just cut off the end. Our picnic table now has legs, which I think most people would agree is an important part of a picnic table. One quick note, if you build a picnic table that's going to be outside somewhere it's going to get wet, or especially if it's going to sit on grass or dirt, you'll want to make the legs out of treated lumber, not the regular two by fours that you see me using here. Treated lumber has chemicals embedded inside it that help prevent rot and bugs and fungus, which is gonna be important if the legs are gonna be sitting on wet ground. We now need to add some supports that are gonna hold the seats up. Those will run along the legs and stick out the sides. That's the two 51 and a half inch pieces we cut from our two by fours. We'll want to measure so that it's nine inches from the bottom of the feet to the bottom of this board. And of course we need to make sure it's level all the way across. This is what the benches are gonna be attached to. So if they're at a weird angle, someone's gonna be falling off the back of the table and someone's gonna be falling into the table. That's no good. It's not starting at zero, which is why it's not ending at nine. It's going from one to 10. Similarly to the cross pieces that are holding up the top of the table, we want to take off the corners, making this into a sort of trapezoid shape. Once again, this isn't structurally necessary, it just makes it less likely for you to like, scrape a knee or leg while you're getting onto the bench. 
we do need to make sure that this cross piece is evenly centered. We don't want to have three planks on one side and one on the other. We're going to line this up the best we can. We'll clamp that in place, free drill, and add one screw, and then we'll use a level to make sure this support is balanced just the way we need it. Just like in the cross pieces at the top, we'll use two bolts to connect the leg to the support beam. With those cross beams attached, we have one remaining piece of our 2x4, and that's the 37 inch piece. And what we're going to do with that is span the gap between the two supports we just installed and add some screws to make it so our bench doesn't shake back and forth very much. Good. Okay guys, time to learn from my mistakes. I said before that we needed to have nine inches from the feet of the table up to this bar, and then I proceeded to attach this beam on the wrong side of the nine inch mark, meaning that this whole setup was one two by four's width too low, too close to the ground. Leaving it like that would cause a lot of problems, so I had to undo the screws and bolts and lower it back down into place. With that sorted out, let's flip our table over and add the benches. That is an assembled picnic table. It's got a top, it's got benches, and it's honestly really sturdy. Now, this picnic table is a mid-sized picnic table, which means if you are over six feet like I am, it may be a little short. You know, my knees don't fit underneath it super well. This isn't really meant for full-size adults, which I like to pretend that I am sometimes. Uh, but we do have a few more little things that we need to add onto it still. So let's take it off of the workbench put it down at ground level and see what we can do. Now we know that we have a cooler in the middle of our table, but at the moment it's a little tricky to get to. There we go. Let's drill a hole big enough that we can reach through the board and lift this out. With that hole drilled in the center, it's a lot easier to access the cooler and put the lid back on right where you want it. I want another small addition that will work as a sort of condiment or accessories holder. I want these little trays to be able to stay right at the edge of the table so we can put, you know, ketchup, mustard, or whatever we want in them. They should also be removable so that when we're not using them, we can just take them off and drop them down into the cooler for storage. Our goal with the trays is going to be to drive two screws into the sides of the board so that just the head is sticking out. We then want to be able to put the trays on and drop them down, which means we need to make a small hole and a small slot that will fit over the neck of a screw. These plastic containers are actually sold as desk organizing containers. I grabbed them at Walmart for about four bucks each. This screw bit is just barely larger than the head of this screw. So if we put a hole into the plastic with this, it should fit over nicely. Excellent. To make the slot that will drop down onto the neck of the screw, let's hit this screw with a blowtorch and then just melt our slot right into the plastic. That way we'll know it will fit just right. Now we can mark on the table where we want the screw to be attached. Our condiment containers are working well. They're easy to put on and to take off. And they store nicely inside our cooler. But there's still one more little element that I want to add onto that, and that is cup holders. I have these two and a half inch grommets that are designed for cable management through a desk. But I also think that they could make some pretty slick cup holders if we just drill into the table and apply these things. If you aren't interested in using the composite decking material that I built these surfaces out of, you can do the whole thing out of wood. A two by six board will be the same width and just a little bit thicker than these boards. This same design should scale up nicely if you'd prefer the six foot long full size picking table rather than the mid size table that this one is. This is a good sturdy picnic table design and because the benches and the tabletop are completely weatherproof, it should last for quite a while. 
Guys, there's still more for you to see. That little box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video. The box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And this bomb here will subscribe you to our channel so you never miss a video. Don't forget to ring that bell and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.